Melanin's role is in fact even being rethought in medicine that, you know, is it really something that just absorbs sunlight or does it have, does melanin have a role in the immune system in the body and uh, is it really more of an antimicrobial kind of defense against bacteria? Because melanin is found throughout all the animal and vegetable kingdom and melanin is the very thing that you have in your hair and in your skin that gives you the color. Whether you're more red, whether you're more brown, whether you're tan, whether you're not, is because the melanin produced by your skin in the parts of the cell called melanocytes or the pigment of your skin. And some people who have a condition called vitiligo where they, their skin looks blotchy and they have white patches, they don't make this pigment. When you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you make more of it. Now, melanin is what gives chaga its dark color. Chaga, that's what's so rich in this mushroom compared to the other mushrooms. And what they found in, in Russia, it, it protects genes and it actually repairs broken DNA. Isn't that wonderful? You, something breaks down because you're exposed to chemicals or radiation. Think of the people of Japan right now in 2011 who are suffering from huge amounts of radiation. What could we do to help them repair their, you know, prevent cancer developing? Well, you need a DNA repairer and that's what melanin does. You know, just think what you can tell people who have families over there and so on. So this is a complex molecule. It's found in the brain. It's found in your adrenal glands. Um, it's a powerful free radical scavenger. In other words, it again, it helps the body prevent this oxidation, so it's an antioxidant. And I believe this is what makes chaga, among other things, one of the more special um, mushrooms that are out there. Now, just look at this. Uh, I hope you can read this, that 40% of the dry weight of chaga is, uh, you know, made up of these water extractable substances and more than half when you dry it of that extract, which is 25% of the original material, is actually this coloring, this melanin, it's called a chromogenic complex. It's another name for it makes a dark color. It's a dark color complex and 25% of this mushroom is made up out of this. It's its most distinctive feature. Now, uh, and again, this is in that paper by Shashkina uh, that's uh, on the website. You can learn about the chemical and medical biological properties of chaga, a review study translated out of Russian from 2006. And this paper basically says, you know, there are these polyphenolic, chromogenic, human-like complexes present in chaga. In other words, it's the dark stuff, the, the dark stuff, the black, brown stuff in chaga, what makes everything look so dark, which just, you know, put it on your skin and it looks a little darker, but somehow it improves in things, as we'll talk about in a minute. That's what's in chaga. And they studied this, uh, Babatskaya uh, studied this in 2002, studied this melanin complex, and says it protects the genes in your body. Now, I'm going to switch hats for a minute and talk. Uh, as you, some of you know, I'm also an engineer and a biomedical engineer. And uh, I've designed equipment that we took to the top of Mount Everest and did the first scientific studies on top of Mount Everest to find out why people could live up there. A very rough environment because there's no oxygen there to breathe. And with no oxygen, your brain does, isn't very happy. And neither is all the cells in your body. So up there, there is less atmosphere and there's an awful lot of light. And so I got really interested back in the 1980s when we did this kind of work with the University of California in San Diego where I was doing a postdoctoral fellowship. Uh, I got really interested also in light. Now, the visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum is only a small part and it's the colors from, you know, the deep reds to the purples. But it's in this very narrow band. Below that there is infrared or warmth, infrared light or warmth microwaves that we use for communication nowadays with our cell phones and Wi-Fi and so on. Radio waves are even longer. And then up here are what's ionizing radiation that breaks down things like ultraviolet light, which is faster in frequency, X-rays and gamma rays like we get from atomic reactors and so forth. 
So light is a very narrow part of the spectrum in what's called nanometers wavelength, 400 to 700 nanometers. Here's another way of seeing it. Here's the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light that your eyes respond to and your skin responds to is a narrow part of the spectrum uh, you know, here. Now, when you look at absorption curves in the, uh, in the test tube of melanin, this is what we're talking about. You can see in the blue part of the spectrum over here, the short wavelengths, which is higher energy, melanin has a lot of absorption. And it falls off a little bit, but it's in the same region that our body absorbs also light in forms of hemoglobin when you oxygenate your blood. It's also in that same region. And when you deoxygenate your blood, when the cells take uh, the oxygen up, then you get the bluer blood, which is venous blood. And it's in the same region where melanin absorbs it. It has a so, very broad absorption of energy. Picture. Okay, It absorbs light and warmth very, very effectively. Uh, and it modulates something in the body. And melanin, you can think of, is very analogous to the chlorophyll. That's the green stuff in plants. What makes the plants green? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the same molecule as hemoglobin that's in your blood, except hemoglobin has iron in the center and chlorophyll has magnesium in the center. It's like liquid green blood. Okay? Now, melanin has the same kind of ring structures and so on, and it makes very complex structures, and not all melanins are the same. Uh, as we'll talk about in a minute. In fact, there's somebody even studying that and wondering whether energy is directly absorbed from the melanin in your skin and transformed into energy in your body. Okay, and uh, they even think about could in the future, and they're developing this now, they're taking melanin and making batteries out of them that store energy from the sunlight directly. It might in fact become a future source of how we're going to generate energy. Now, let's get back with that little bit of uh, physics background. Let's talk about melanin inside chaga and melanin inside the body. So it absorbs thousands of times more electromagnetic radiation, actually, than chlorophyll does. And chlorophyll is what we need to make proteins and sugars, uh, especially sugars, in, in the body. It exists in many other tissues, as I mentioned. It's actually a very important molecule in any woman who's having a baby because the fetus has all this melanin in it, as I'll show you. Okay? And it's thought to be, by some people, a master molecule that actually steers how the body communicates. Uh, for example, Frank Barr, a scientist, wrote a whole article, a whole issue of a journal called Medical Hypothesis saying, you know, melanin is such a special molecule and it's found in the babies, it may have a major role in, uh, in steering things in the body in the whole regulatory system. Melanin's role in embryological organization, that's in the baby's organization, and tissue repair and tissue regeneration may be uh, 